good to see you and thank you for thank you so much for inviting me on the show you're welcome you're very welcome so how is year 3808 doing so far uh it's a brutal mess but you know so is the world <laughs> yeah agreed agreed so meta but, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the weather in the UK, to be fair, is not too bad. It's cold, um, a little bit windy. Um, I'm currently down on the south coast um, of the UK where I'm, I'm based with work at the moment. So I'm streaming and very lucky to have the green screen behind me. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't see the rest of my uh, my little room that I have here. So um, it's the green screen, but uh, it's, it's good, to, uh, good to be here for sure. Yeah, we are so happy that we finally, finally made a, made it possible to, to find the time to talk together. And um, yeah, we wanted to talk about, f f with, uh, with other points, uh, we wanted to talk about the, um, your new album upcoming soon. Tell everybody a little about that. Um, well, if you guys have been on my stream at all, uh, Outlaw Vision, uh, Monday nights on Twitch, uh, at MattHart3808. Um, I have been promoting my album for weeks and weeks and months and months and months, um, pretty much going back to about, uh, I go as far as saying about a year and a half ago, um, I hadn't got the idea for um, the name of the album, but I released a track called Terrifying. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard it, um, certainly in its original form and it's, uh, its remixed form by um, which the veil and moan exists uh, and it kind of started from there i didn't know where i was going what i was doing i was kind of releasing one song at a time during um during the pandemic and uh, uh eventually kind of got a collection of tracks together um and uh, decided that no, sorry i'm gonna put i'm gonna put an album together i, I thought maybe i wouldn't and i'd put um a collection of EPs or something like that. Anyway, I had enough tracks to put out a nine-track album. So the album's it's a shortish album, um, but it's uh, it's nine tracks, um, three of which most people should have heard by now, which is uh, "To the Core." If you've heard "To the Core," um, and uh, "Decimate," uh, and obviously "Terrifying," um, all three of those tracks are on the album. Um, and we certainly recently sent out to um, uh, our promo pool um, brand new tracks, I Am Overlord uh, and Absolute Zero. Absolute Zero was the first one that hasn't really been heard anywhere, um, but I Am Overlord actually features on the brand new um, Face the Beat 7 um, coming from Sideline Magazine. Uh, so do um, collect the Face the, Face the Beat albums, um, you can check out the brand new track, I Am Overlord, which is on Below the Terror. Um, Below the Terror Part 1, because maybe there's going to be a Part 2 or a Part 3, or who knows? I, I don't really know where I'm going with it yet. Um, but uh, the concept is there. Um, humanity is underground, um, digging down towards the core, um, getting to where it's warmer, away from the icy cold surface and the machine overlords as the concepts and the story goes. So uh, it's kind of where we're at, um, uh, but it comes out on Tuesday. Um, so you can pre-order it right now at mattheart.bandcamp.com. Um, and uh, if you come along to my Twitch show on Monday night, um, uh, so it's one hour earlier than this stream. So so we're, we're one hour earlier. So um, if you're there in Germany uh, or Europe at least, um it's it's one hour earlier but uh, if you come along we will be releasing um sorry i'll be playing um the whole album through um in the hour after my show so my show is 9 p.m um and uh i, I will play my regular two-hour show i may not play any matt hart tracks because i know uh, a lot of you do request matt hart tracks which is awesome love you guys um, but uh, in the last, in the third hour of Outlaw Vision, I am going to be playing and talking through the whole album. So every every track um, will have a little bit of a, you know, how I wrote it or the theme or the story behind it, if there is one. Or I'll just wing it and go, uh, I have no idea. I just wrote it and put it on paper and there it is. Or in digital, keyboardy, guitars and vocals. The, no uh, the, now the, ne the nowadays notes. <laughs> The nowadays notes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, and then and then we'll release it live. So I'll have um, I'll have a, a window of um, of the Bandcamp, and I'll, I'll I'll go with my mouse and I'll click um, release the pre-order. So it goes the whole album goes live. So um, anyone that still happens to ha not have pre-ordered it or happens to want to kind of buy it, um, then it will be yeah, uh, available. Uh, and then it drops on um, all the regular streaming services, Spotify um, and uh, iTunes and all that stuff at midnight um, in your time zone, wherever your time zone it drops at midnight. So if you are in Australia, it might be out or you know, 10, 11, 12 hours before, uh, before it's actually out here, uh, which quite often happens. So uh, that's, yeah, Below the Terror. It's the blue album, as I, I kind of coined it, as you see from my stream, everything's blue at the moment. Um, it is it is the blue album um, artwork by Vlad McNeely, who's done a, a lot of a lot of artwork for um, Armalite Records, Pig. Um, uh, just need to follow find him, Callisti Design, uh, Vlad McNeely, and he's done a lot of artwork for some some awesome bands out there. And, and I love his artwork and everything back from um, from the Chaos Rising records, which are my kind of my trilogy of EPs. Um, it's all been done by him, so I was like, I, I wouldn't go anywhere. I want to keep keeping the, in the theme of everything, um, and uh, and go from there. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Am I, am I uh, talking enough? <laughs> you, you, I, I invited you because I knew that I wouldn't have to say too much. <laughs> okay, so um, cheers, cheers, and uh, with a new album out uh, coming out, how many uh, live gigs can we expect in the next time from uh, coming from you and uh, maybe your band? I don't know if you're on stage alone. Uh, yes, yeah, so my 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 band is me and my guitarist um, is a fellow called Jerome. Um, he has his own band, um, Drilling Spree. It's kind of like um, punk rock, uh, rock metal uh, music. Um, but he, we just happened to be down a pub. This is like um, about five years ago, uh, and I'd started, I'd started writing, um, writing the music, uh, and I, I was kind of looking for a guitarist. I had a couple of people in mind, but they weren't able to do it. And I happened to be in a pub. Um, hanging out with some good friends uh, and 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 this guy uh, Jerome, we got we got chatting and he told me he's a guitarist and loved industrial music, um, a big fan of it, um, and that's kind of what I wanted someone that, that had a passion for the for the for the music style rather than someone that didn't really get it, I suppose. Um, so we started working together. Um, he is basically he is my live guitarist. Um, uh, I I produce the whole album. Um, I write the whole album. Um, all the, well, I write all the music. I do all the guitars, vocals, um, electronics, and stuff. Um, but live, he he, um, he plays guitar. So there's two of us on stage, um, uh, and live gigs we've got coming up. Live shows we've got coming up on the 9th of April. Uh, I'm playing in London in um, uh, in the Electro Works, which is where Slime Light Club is. Um, uh, uh, I think that's a Saturday night. Um, we're playing a, a festival called Electrobox Festival um, with a, a bunch of bands on there. Um, Chameleon, uh, Biomechanical, if you've ever seen me DJ them, they're playing as well. Um, they have a live setup. Um, and uh, so that'll be the first, first live gig back since December 2019. So wow, and unless unless Slither corrects me, I think that's right. Uh, I played a show uh, in a club called Reptile in uh, in December 2019, um, and I was actually meant to play uh, that club Reptile again uh, in December 2021. Um, but unfortunately, the venue um, uh, kind of threw out the the club, the promoters. Um, it, they didn't throw them out. It just wasn't possible to do it. Um, change of venue and and, and it, anyway, it didn't happen. Um, and I haven't done that gig yet. That'll come up probably later this year. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so it's been that long, and I, I really need to get back into the rehearsal studio. We've got our first rehearsal back um, tomorrow morning. No, uh, Saturday morning. What day of the week is it? It's it's uh, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. If, if, it feels like a Friday. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, don't 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 do this to me. If there uh, would be Friday, we would have already started the festival since 50 minutes ago, and I would yes, now be right. panicking. <laughs> and, and, and what 
what, uh, Patrick, what festival is this? Ah, you talk, you there's talk, something with 48 hours and there's a okay. strange guy coming from 3808 playing with others, other okay. DJs okay. and so on. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> so everybody, if you haven't gotten word of it yet, uh, this weekend we are going into the sixth episode of our 48 Hours Festival. This time we are having 37 DJs of around the globe with us uh, who will be playing uh, non-stop going from Friday at 6 CET until Sunday. I know it should be going until 6 CET, but we're going longer as always, but 48 hours is a catchy name and blah blah blah. <laughs> and um, yeah, we are so looking forward to this and um, we got so many great DJs with us and it's a great lineup and it turned out so good. You can check it out in the link I just posted if you want to. Um, you can also find all the tip links for the DJs uh, attending in the festival and so on on that link. And the homepage is localized to your time zone wherever you are on the planet so you can always see when they are playing in your time zone. This is the, the important point in that. Hey, DJ Cyclone, good evening, good evening. Okay, Matt Hart, back to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Slither just reminded me I, I did do a show. <laughs> this is uh -huh. like January this year. So, um, But I did do it solo. So I actually haven't done a show with my guitarist um, since. And it was kind of like, a, I, I call it like a hybrid show. Um, it was a cross between I played some of my remixes and did like my vocals over the top, plus some of my... my um, backing without um so guitars are on the backing but without the vocals so i was it's kind of like a hybrid of I, I got to play some of the remixes and some of my 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 live tunes um so yes i did do a show but it doesn't feel because i haven't done a show with the guitarist it doesn't feel like um i've done a show a proper show i suppose um and then going back to live shows i've got um I, I, awesome awesome so uh, we go back to uh, um we go back to April 2020, um, and it's where, where streaming really kicked off for me. Um, I, I, um, I was meant to DJ a, a festival in, in the UK called Resistance in 2020. I know that festival. Yeah, I know that festival. Cool. Uh, awesome festival up in the north in Sheffield, um, and uh, I'd been invited to DJ on the Friday night. So as soon as the band's finished, DJ comes out. Um, spins for an hour, an hour and a half. I think it was an hour and a half set. So um, that was always the plan. We're going to go up there, going to do that. Pandemic hits, gigs mm -hmm. get cancelled, was mm -hmm. getting cancelled. Um, so I thought that um, rather than do, you know, that I'd noticed that people already kind of started streaming. Um, we'd already kind of got an idea of what Twitch was going on a little bit, but I, I was unsure of the platform. Anyway, I thought, well, YouTube, I've got my YouTube channel. Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to stream to YouTube. YouTube um, has a live a live function to it where you can go live. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in my ultimate wisdom back in those days, I thought, you know, wireless, I can go wireless. My camera from my phone linked to an app on my computer, used OBS. Um, and anyway, by the end of the show, that um, I think there was like a I don't know, 15, 20 second delay between my camera and actually what i was doing it, it was oh just my God. It was crazy. yeah but that was the first time i got to actually go live um and um i actually went live at exactly the same time i would have gone live for resistance festival so i kind of i talked to the promoter and said you know can i promote it in the in the festival uh, facebook group and festival facebook uh, event and that kind of thing anyway it was a it was a great success we had a lot of people come along um and uh um, and it kind of went from there. I, I, I then thought, oh, well, do, do I carry on doing this? You know, I saw a lot of people on Twitch and I was like, I don't know what this platform is. I'm not, I'm not a huge gamer where the platform came from. Um, I assume that's where it came from, I think. It, Mostly it game. It, it, Most it, it, game, it did. right? 100% yeah. gaming. Yeah. Um, and I saw, I saw a kind of... A, a few, a few of my friends and colleagues and, and um, some of the Twitch streams that were going on, I was like, well... I have streamed live. Why don't I? Why don't I try it again on Twitch? Let me create. I'd already created an account so I could be chatting in the in the channels that we were hanging out in. Um, and I thought I'll give it a go. Um, and 
I don't know what the point of this story was. You didn't really ask me this question. I'm just kind of wandering along. Just go on. Is. Just go on. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm happy with, with your story time and I find time to drink something. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Um, so it's, I guess it's where, where, where Twitch for me started. I think it was May. And you mentioned earlier in the stream, 19 months, like even 19 months, it seems like eternity ago. Um, we had it. We had a couple of people subscribe on Monday, uh, and it was like 21 months they've been they've been in there. And I, you you must have been going longer than that, anyway. Um, well, um, Drachencube and uh, Dra Drachencube and Patrick already got their 24 months. Wow! So you've done you've done two years. Wow! Yes, that's that's it, it's crazy. Like where we've gone, uh, where we've come from. Um, anyway. Uh, so I, I changed the, the, the broadcasting software. I went from like the OBS open software to the Streamlabs. It seemed more um, things, there was more option to do stuff and it was a simpler way of adding extra bits and pieces. Um, um, and so that's kind of where I started and, and it became Outlaw Vision from day one. Um, and uh, we've gone from strength to strength ever since and you know, um, you know, met some some crazy people, you included, um, uh, and some crazy channels that are out there. And you know that the, the community now is is, is it's so crazy, beyond, it's oh, so it's crazy. crazy. It's beyond compare. You know, for for yes, I, you know, I I see that there are other streams for. It seems that trance music has quite a big. Um, Twitch, uh, the, the, the electronic music scene in Tokyo. Yeah. There are house yeah. streams, there are hands up streams, a lot of yeah. um, hard techno st streams. But besides electronic music and some metal streams where guys are playing music, uh, guitars with a rocksmith, for example. Yeah. Or I've seen some crazy good Asian guys playing piano live. This <laughs> is crazy. That's but cool. Besides this, yeah, some crazy like um, multi instrumentalists. Um, but uh, uh, where was I going with that? Um, oh, meeting people, the community. So the, the the gothic Twitch community has become a thing of its own, um, a powerhouse. Um, and you can see that from you know from from the, the forty eight hours festivals that you've been running. You know we, we're at number six now, and yes. you know. When we've been averaging, what was it 400, 500 people generally? More, 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 even now. more. It's, it's crazy. Like I, I uh, think in in total coming through, we had last uh, last forty eight hours, we had about twelve thousand unique viewers. That's crazy. This that's is crazy. so crazy. I mean, it, it it's crazy for for a, for a digital platform that you know people are just at home on their lounge. Um, in their lounges or their computers or in their offices or walking down the streets as i as i know that people do listen to the chats when they're walking down the street um uh it's uh it doesn't compare i mean you know i've i've been to wave gothic treffen um it doesn't compare to that in in real life uh event with the, you know the atmosphere of, of yeah of course people around you and and loud noise and music but it, it has become its own entity there's no there's no doubt about that um and i, I love it and you know, i wouldn't i wouldn't throw it away for anything um and you know it was one of those things that oh we get to the end of the pandemic and restrictions um you know a, a, a loosening and oh, i'm on a monday night for two hours it's like I've got nothing better to do on a Monday night really? for two hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. And, and yeah, know, of course, we we've built such a community that um, I wouldn't want to let them down. Now I wouldn't want to let you guys down. You Aww. know. Yeah, this is what, skulls, that little crew. <laughs> yeah, this is this is so crazy. We felt that bad for letting everybody down the past Saturday, which was the first Saturday we ever skipped since we started Twitch. But I was laying uh, down with fever, and Patrick was sick as well. So we we couldn't do it and uh, mm. we really both felt so sad about that and um, besides this I, I can only agree we uh, we wouldn't want to to let the community down no matter what happens in the future and um, the other point is I've been told again and again by people that um, th uh, one point dark twitch is definitely something that will stay 
And the other point is that there are so many people out there telling us and reaching out, out to us uh, saying this is the first time in years I am able to be part of the scene again because I am unable to to go to clubs because of mental health, because of health issues, because of financial, family, no matter what. And um, this is something that I didn't think of when, when we started back in the day, but it mm -hmm. totally makes sense for me. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, and, and, and as, uh, I'll, ah, 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 sorry, cramp. <laughs> uh, a controversial point that I'll mention in a moment, um, but, uh, Yes, being able, being able to, you know, people who are not able to go out to the clubs, to be able to entertain in that way, it is, it, 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 it's, it's amazing. And um, my, the point of being able to share music as well, um, and, and this is my controversial point. I had, I had a kind of discussion with, with, with Sandra Slither um, that um, are we as DJs in this format on this platform? Are we influencers? Are we music influencers? It's it's a question I, I you know I put to chat. You know, do you think that we as 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 DJs on Twitch influence the community in a way that here's this music, go and listen to it. I support it. Now you go support it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, some some much as I hate the word influencer. And yeah, and... yeah. Pa Patrick and I have <laughs> been called uh, Godfluencers, and this word mm. sounds a lot, lot, lot uh, much nicer than influencer. Yeah. And um, I Fences. think we definitely are. I mean, uh, maybe we are not on a on a level like I don't know the modern influencers. I have no idea. I'm way too old for that shit. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, I'm sure we do not have a big influence in total, but um, for example, we we made an experiment last year where we where Patrick d discovered uh, a band with I think they had 20 or 30 Facebook followers when they when he initially discovered them, and then we kept playing them for four nights and always yeah. pushed their Facebook profile, and in the end of mm -hmm. that, they had 2,000 likes. So. It seems like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And, um, and just like Sandra is putting it out right now, um, I think the main point is if you have any respect for the artists you are playing the music of, and this is something I can only give out to everybody doing it, display the name of the track on your screen because the music was not done by myself and I still play it, so I have to put out who did it. And this is the least I can do. Just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you you, you see that from my streams. <laughs> I'm there, and you actually see it. You actually see it being typed out, and I, I've just got used to it. As much as my my community go track ID, track ID, bring it. Where is the track ID? And as I soon as my I, own track. <laughs> as, as soon as I forget changing the the track for 30 seconds, I can I can be sure that uh, Schwarzheit will send me a private message. Yeah. You forgot the track no, ID. <laughs> Oh, because you're paying attention more than I am. I've got other things to do, like pay attention to the chat. Or talk on the mic, if you're me. Or yeah. DJ, because we're DJs, you know. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> but you've got to know what track's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. And and I know, I, may, I mean, you're somebody who's working with the music as well as we are. So um, when you're in your, in your head, when you're already three songs ahead and two songs are playing and the thir third one is already ready in the next deck and you're going yeah. through a 45 second transition, then you might forget to change the song title. Sorry, yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think it mostly happens when I get excited about playing something. Yeah, and I, get, I I sometimes announce it, what I'm going to play, and then I start playing it because I love it so much. I'm just like digging the tune, and then yeah. I'm like, okay, what am I going to play next? And I've got to like fiddle through what I'm playing next, and then I get the the stickers on the on the on the screen going track ID, track ID, track ID. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely worth having it up there, and I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't have it. I think it, I think I did one one stream where where it just didn't work, and I didn't want to crash my computer. And so I was like, I, th I think almost between every track, I was like, this is blah, 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 by blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm talking, speaking of like what you, you know, you weren't able to um, stream on Saturday. I, I was thinking, looking back, 
Um, there's been there's been a few times when I haven't been able to uh, stream, but I've always got kind of guests in to do just stream via my channel. Um, but we've always been able like holiday in that um, and be able to kind of be in the chat anyway. Um, but there was there was only one time um, that uh, I, I wasn't able to actually make a stream and I didn't have a stream, and that's been. God knows how many streams. Um, well, it'd be a nearly, nearly coming up to a hundred, uh, coming up to a hundred streams. I should really count how many um, Outlaw Visions I've done. I know you did your, you had your big one hundred stream, hundred stream party, didn't you? Yeah, you can um, see it right here in the screen uh, if you look at the Twitch channel. So yeah. tonight is one hundred ninety-five, not counting oh, right. all the specials. Yeah. Yeah, so I, maybe I need to go back over um, over my uh, over my Mondays and see how many Mondays I've done and see what when I when will I uh, when will I actually do one hundred um, Outlaw Vision shows. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice thing to to celebrate those those small uh, small landmarks. Um, so yeah, I mean, going going back to uh, you were saying about live shows, um, so. Uh, yes, I've got Electrovox Music Festival on the 9th of April, uh, and then it's only a week later is the Resistance Festival on the 15th, 16th, 17th uh, of um, that's Easter weekend. Um, we're up in Sheffield for that, uh, and uh, looking at the lineup, um, I'm extremely excited about the lineup. Even, even you know, just regardless of the point that I'm I'm on the festival, um, by stroke of luck, um, uh, looking at the lineup and who's playing after me. Um, think on the the first day i'm opening and then it's stoppenberg and esa following me wow. yeah so i'm just like ah. um and then i i know there's uh um i think empathy test and road to sand are playing um uh antibody is playing i had recently did a remix for him that's com coming out coming out soon i think um, and he did a remix for me on my um, Tales of Terror and Chaos Retold album, which is the green album, the remix album that's up on my bandcamp, matthalf.bandcamp.com. Hashtag sells himself. <laughs> so how are we doing on the um, questions? Have, uh, have we had any questions from the audience? I, I didn't see any the chat? yet. I didn't see any upcoming yet. Did, so I, did I did I see something, see one from Chris McCarthy Dean asking about Below the Terror Part Two? Chris, if you're there, ask the question again. Um, he definitely asked the question. Uh, what are your top three artists uh, you're following in in 2022 until right now? Okay, let's go with that. Um, uh, going back in time, back in history, one of the first bands that got me into music was. Um, uh, maybe an unknown band named Fear Factory. Um, Fear Factory represent. Um, I was massively into metal, uh, and they were the kind of the the crossover uh, band that got me into heavy music, got me into industrial music, um, and I've, I've really loved them ever since. Their sound is something that I've always kind of had in the background of my mind when I've written music, um, and. Uh, Hang on a sec. Oh yeah, okay. Um, uh, so, so I've I've always kind of they've been a big influence to me, and and in 2022 they're still a big band, and they released um, uh, was it Genexus? Was that the latest one? I'm um, terrible with names, but I think that was that came out in 2021, um, and I love it. Um, and they're going on tour, and I know they're doing the US, um, Canada, possibly. Um, hoping they'll come over here um, without their singer. Um, but uh, the, the sound of their band and, and is just is just a sound that I love. So, really uh, influential band for me is is definitely um, Fear Factory. Um, other bands that I'm loving right now, um, I'm I'm quite good friends with Jamie from ESA, um, and but I, I I I really try and divide that friendship, and I still love the, the music that he writes. Is like I, I play ESA, and it's just a subject that's ESA. Um, regardless of Jamie being over here, ESA is amazing, and I, I love his new album, Designer Carnage. Um, it's just heavy. He's he's drawing on some um, 
of what's kind of become known as industrial bass, I suppose, that slower mid-tempo um, music. Um, but but what he's doing, rather than, because you listen to a lot of his early stuff and it was very fast paced, a lot of kind of 130, 140 BPM tracks. Um, and he's kind of slowed it down, but he's still got so heavy and it's just electronics. Um, and I, I love the kind of sound of that. Um, what else am I loving? I, I'm still a huge fan. I have not yet seen them, um, but uh, Horsk, H O R S K H. Um, they're from France, uh, and I, I generally play them in nearly every set that I do. Um, but uh, they're playing they're playing Resistance Festival as well. I think they're playing Saturday, I think. Um, and I'm really really looking forward to that and, and meeting them just because their their sound is 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 that crossover between heavy metal and industrial bass, electronic, EDM, EBM, industrial. It's just what their sound is, I have no idea. Kind of kind of similar to Mo and Exist. Uh, and when Mo and Exist, um, when I reached out to them to do a, um, um, do a remix, for, the remix for Terrifying, they were so humble. They're just really, really nice um, French guys. Mo and Exist are from, uh, from France as well. Um, and uh, they were super sweet. And, um, you know, I think really since since terrifying I've, I've seen them like well now on the on the remix kind of um uh i'm not saying it was me not saying it was me however um their remix of terrifying certainly um spurred them up into the world and got them got them um noticed a little bit i mean certainly they were they were getting it with their original material and it's it, again it's one of those bands that's just extremely heavy um but electronically heavy uh, and i would i would highly highly recommend their album necessary violence um, anyway, am, am I talking too much? Chat? Nah, am I talking? Nah. Is it, okay. is it something I normally do? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay, I, I really got some some questions. First question from Chris McCarthy Dean: What does "Below the Part Two of Below the Terra"? Uh, when does uh, "Below the Below the Part Two of Below the Terra" come out, and what can we expect from the second portion? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are. I, I, I've got. I've got a handful, and that that's kind of like a handful, I suppose, uh, of tracks planned for it. Um, uh, it's it's going to be along a similar kind of line. I I'd like to say I'm going to get heavier with it, but I don't really know yet. Um, I know that potentially right now I'm looking at. Um, another um heavy track like terrifying but um probably heavier uh in that kind of mid-tempo industrial bass kind of sound um there's certainly one track that's going to step outside of um what i write normally um and be a kind of um heavy drum and bass track um uh, uh and the rest of it. I'd al I always thought I'd kind of go back to a bit of an earlier sound, get more guitars in there and that kind of thing. But it's just kind of what I what I feel like writing. Um, uh, if you've if you've um, listened through my kind of back catalogue, you, you'll kind of see that from from Chaos Rising One, um, it was very. I really wanted a very bleak industrial sound. So there's there's guitars, there's clanks, there's you know that kind of EBM. Um, bass line and drum kind of sounds and then the kind of the harsh vocals and that's kind of where I went but you listen through it and you listen through the trilogy and, and the, the evolution of my own production because that those three records were completely produced by me uh, I did all the production the mixing and the mastering on it um, and I think my <clears throat> my own um, experience in, in producing music got better and better um, but I reached the end of Chaos Rising 3 um, I go back to the point of um, if you listen to the tracks on Chaos Rising one, two, and three, you see the diversity in in in, uh, in what I write because I I just don't I don't feel I need to or I have a necessity to conform to one kind of sound. Um, I I love the albums that do have that kind of diversity of of tempo, of sounds of. Um, soundscapes that are created in you know they they could just be almost noise down to kind of um you know 100 bpm stompers to 
to 128 kind of dance floor tr tracks. And I, I just, I, I think I in 2017 I was still well, still DJing quite regularly. Um, 27, 2018, uh, and I think I've always been highly influenced by what I DJ. Um, I'm sure I'm sure you kind of feel the same. You, what you you go through go through phases of what you like to listen to, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's it's like I, I do the same because I'm, I'm I'm fingers in lots of pies when it comes to the music, um, and and what. You know what I find find from um, I don't know Patrick. How do you, how do you find music? How do you find new music? Because uh, I'll, I'll answer this, I'll answer my own question in a minute. But <laughs> I, I I go through uh, the new releases that I get by either promotion or um, that I find uh, in in newsletters and stuff. Listen through that and uh, get a selection out of this. Even if I have to admit. There are weeks where I listen, or, or example, the complete month February. It was about five gigabyte of MP3, and I yeah. completely discovered, I guess, three songs or something, and all of the rest was nothing I wanted to play. Yeah, but yeah. happens. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, okay. In a, in a, go on. You got a question? Um, and I got an, I got another question from Chris, Ma Chris McCarthy Dean. I need to point out. Yes. Where did the artwork for part one come from? Also, do you think you will step officially into the industrial bass mid-tempo genre with a full album at some point? Um, what was the first question? Where the artwork <laughs> for part one came from. Artwork. Um, so, uh, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, the artwork is done by uh, Vlad McNeely, uh, Callisti Design, his, his, um, uh, his kind of moniker. And um, he, uh, he, I kind of give him free reign on it. Uh, I kind of give him the idea or the concepts behind the album. Um, I wanted this one, especially Below the Terror, to be kind of cold and icy. That's why it's got a blue look to it. You know, it's got kind of snow and, you know, the, 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 the characters on the front and, and inside are very kind of wrapped up. Um, I mean, it, it's um, influenced by, by the world of 3808. Um, a future where the the surface of the earth is is bleak it's barren it's there are machines that rule it that roam it um and the fact that humanity is is underground and if you see from the from the from the um um from the uh from the cover you've got this big big kind of like monolith um thing and basically that's kind of um Below that is is the entrance to to, to below the terror, uh, and and this the guy on the front, I suppose, is 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 the guy that's guarding it at that moment. You know, humanity taking it in turns. You know, there's recce parties that go up to the surface and back down, and we have the digging parties that are going down, um, and and that's kind of that's kind of the the idea behind it. And 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 McNeely just um, just kind of runs with the concept, I suppose, and he always has. Um, um, I think I think one of my favorite my, my favorite album covers is Chaos Rising Three, and it's just it is a pile of skulls, and and not saying that the Outlaw Crew kind of thing came from that, um, but certainly into the I had not hadn't got thirty eight oh eight at that point, but Chaos was rising and it was just you know pile of skulls, and then you see the machines underneath that. Um, uh, going to your second question, Chris. Um, uh, about a whole album of industrial bass? No. <laughs> um, I, like I was saying about my influences and that kind of thing, I, I'm I'm bombarded with influences. I'm 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 a musician myself um, in my day job as well, um, and just listening, hearing music and, and tonality and harmony and melody and and textures and 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 then coming coming into out of work and going into the the um, the dance floor music that i listen to or the you know some of the streams that i listen to it's it my mind is bombarded with beats um and electronics the whole time so i don't have i don't want to ever just do one thing um because i, I it also i think in a way um alienates people that like one side of what i do um over over another so you know uh, a metalhead that gets gets into my music because they've heard X track or Y track, 
um, because it's heavy and it's got guitars. I mean, you listen to you listen to Terror Thirty Eight Oh Eight, which is my debut album, which is twelve tracks of um, of original material released in twenty nineteen, November twenty nineteen, and that's the Red album. Um, available on matthard.bandcamp.com. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, hashtag sells himself um and yeah uh, you listen to that some of that and it's very very guitar i was really kind of i was digging guitar stuff i wanted to play more guitars on it and and i think minus um gone to shit uh terror 3808 the opening track i th- think every track had guitars on it um uh, I, I, I was at home. I had my guitars hung up on my wall, and and uh, I, I wanted how I wanted to make an industrial metal album, uh, and that's just what I was I was listening to. That's what was influencing me, um, and that's what I, I wanted to put down on paper. Vintage Gal Seven, thanks for following me on Bandcamp. Much appreciated. <laughs> awesome. Um, so. You, you listen back to Terra 38 and, and, and someone who loves industrial metal will love that album because the, there's guitars on it. It's heavy. Like some of it is, um, is down tuned to kind of eight string guitar tuning. Um, you listen to edge of life and outlaws outlaws is where, um, um, welcome to 3008. You listen back through the lyrics of that. And actually that was what influenced outlaw vision. Um, and the kind of the idea of 3808, uh, incidentally, if anyone was wondering where 3808 came from, um, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking, I will. Um, it it comes from um, my Instagram page, weirdly. Um, you know, when you when you sign up for a, for a platform, um, they sometimes give you a, a random number after your name. So it was Matt Hart, and then they gave me 3808. Um, and uh i kind of dug the sound of 3808 i guess 808 you know is a electronic music kind of well-known number um and uh, i just kind of like that idea it's just a completely random number but it's it's not that far in the future although it is you know 1800 years in the future um and uh <laughs> um so I've got the chat going there, so I'm like flicking eyes over there. So if you see me looking over there, no, apologies. No, no worries, it's the same. I got the chat over there. Yeah, yeah, fair and enough. And I'm, I'm currently playing around with the overlay and have your Bandcamp link blinking under your... Hey, look at that. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so 30AO came, came from Instagram, basically. Um, I, I'm not owned by Instagram and I won't uh, promote it apart from my name came from Instagram. Um, but then, you know, the, the Twitch the Twitch channel became Matt Hart 38 away. It seems like a, 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 a random enough number that I can use it as a um, as a solid number of that's, that is my Twitch name, you know. As much as I, I see, like, all the DJs that we have on Twitch, it's so funny, like, they pop into the stream, it's like, DJ this, DJ that, and it's awesome. You know, labeling that they are a DJ. Um, you know, uh, and um, hello, DJ Liebchen. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, Slither was talking to me. Uh, this was like a few months back, and I was like, you know, should, we should put DJ at the front of your name. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I know I DJ, and yes, on Twitch time I am a DJ, um, but I'm also a musician, uh, and 3808 wouldn't be part of DJ, and I wouldn't ever go by the name DJ Matt Hart 3808 or something. Um, so, uh, so I, I just kept it as Matt Hart 3808. That's that is Twitch. That is kind of the the year that, that everything is set. Um, so I, I've well lost my train of thought again. Um, but, uh, Terror 3808. That's the album. Heavy music. Yes, industrial. Uh, metal. So the idea of releasing an album that is see, bringing it back, <clears throat> bringing it back. It's one thing that tells me a lot. I need to go backwards and think about what we, where we started from. <laughs> um, um, so industrial metal of Terra 3808, um, writing new music, writing an album, a full album of one sound. I don't think I will do it. Um, I have plans in the future to do um, some collaborations or um, where I will work with an artist or 
um, something where we do two tracks. So like similar to the, uh, you may well have seen it, Moronixis and Morris Black did, um, is it State Rejects and Moments of Descent? I think that's kind of like a double album um, where they both worked on both tracks together, but one track is more like the other. So it would be like an EP where you'd get, I'd write one track with influence from the other artist. They'd write one track with influence from me, and then we'd remix each other's tracks. So you'd get kind of like a four, four, four track EP, I think. I think back in the day, if you can tell me rightly, Patrick, um, it may well have been someone like Decrups, Frontline so. Assembly, so. MFDM. They did like a, um, a Versus album. I don't know uh, if you remember. I, I, I know that, um, that, that, that somebody on Infected did something like this. And I know that I only know from Nitza app, I think, the, the album. But I'm not sure 100%. Okay, cool. Someone in the chat may well know. Okay, um, but uh, let's 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 put out another question from Creepy Culture. Any yes. remixing of other bands' tracks you've got coming, or any remixes being done on your tracks that you are looking forward to and already can share? Already that I can share? No. Um, actually, yeah, there's a couple. Uh, like, um, like talk about, like talk about, not share. Like uh, put it out, but uh, you're all non in non-disclosure anymore. <laughs> Non-disclosure agreement. Um, yes, I have uh, a remix on the new Antibody record. I remix one of his tracks. Um, I have a remix coming on the new Simon Carter and Fabsy record, uh, which I played on Monday. We are the witches. I did. Um, um, I kind of pimped up, pimped up the track and made it a little bit more kind of club-like. I think. Um, Although I try not to listen to the original too much, I just get the stems and, and, and do what I do with it. Um, um, I think. Oh no, there's another one um, that's uh, another remix that I've done that hasn't been released yet. Um, but that yeah, I, that hasn't been released by the band yet, um, and they haven't announced it, so I can't do that. Um, but you will know. Trust me, if you come along, especially if you come along to my channel, you, you, I tend to play the remixes of stuff that I do, um, and then remixes of my stuff. Um, anyone that may have been in my channel um, uh, over the last, I think it was about a month, maybe three weeks ago, and um, we put, a, and it's something I don't do generally, uh, like a donation um, donation link. But I was, it was, it was a beyond my budget. It wasn't something I was necessarily looking for um but i felt that if if the outlaws the the community were up for helping me out um covering um 50 of the cost uh, of a remix um by rotosand um then i would approach um christian who does most of the production uh for rotosand and incidentally has mastered the whole of below the terror um he uh we've kind of we've become quite good acquaintances i suppose um so i reached out to him and said how much would it cost um and the the community filled the bar uh, and it, it literally blew my mind um that they um they were willing to do that for me um uh, to have it on to have it on um to have have a red sand remix of a matt hart track so he has the stems um and he he messaged me yesterday that um he said should be done by friday so uh, done by thursday so i may well have that tomorrow <clears throat> and unlikely that i'll play it um until it's kind of closer to its release time obviously we've got the new album coming out on tuesday and i can't start putting new stuff out i've got to keep promoting this album um for a few sure. weeks a few weeks at least <laughs> um but there is another remix um um, and we have other remix plans um, coming coming together because I, I think I think our scene really benefits from that uh, as far as the artists go the collaboration between artists um, in in that remix form and I think it to have someone else's um, someone else's take of your music and vice versa like my my take on someone else's music um, I think it really it benefits both both artists. Um, um, uh, and uh, for me, as a, as a smaller artist, I, I look to kind of bigger artists to remix it, which gets that little extra push. 
um, uh, when ESA, when Jamie reached, uh, when I reached out to Jamie and said, would you do a remix for me? You know, um, you've heard Trilith um, and that kind of 131 BPM banger that is that is Trilith ESA remix. Um, uh, it, it's just, you know, why, why would I not want my music sounding like ESA in that moment? Sure. You know, just push sure. it push it out and, and and that's where that's where um tales of terror and chaos came from I, I over i think that album was um collected over about probably about three years i think um uh, and you listen to you you kind of you look at the artists on there they're all all kind of um artists that i love and and i i was really kind of like excited to work with as far as um uh getting them to remix the stuff um Especially guys from Nitro Noise, although they're not Nitro Noise anymore. Uh, I don't haven't released anything in a couple of years now. Um, but uh, Christian, um, they're from Montreal, Canada. Um, so um, uh, reaching out to Christian and saying, "Would you would you do a Nitro Noise remix for me?" Uh, and then you listen to Chaos Rising, um, the track Chaos Rising Nitro Noise remix, and it's got this kind of. Uh, if you could if you could say anything it sounds like Ramstein. It, it sounds like that kind of real stompy guitar industrial of the, uh, the in in germany you have you have a word for like guitar industrial like um it begins with h i think i i don't know i i don't know what it is but it's like oomph and um ah uh, you're talking about neue deutsche härte that will probably be it <laughs> NDH. Okay, cool. And so, this is yeah. all those stompy German yeah. singing metal I, that, guitar bands. I, I, Ice Brescher, Rammstein, Um. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Neue Deutsche Härte. Yeah. It's, it's uh, translated uh, New German Hardness or something. Hey, Dark okay. Tunes, good evening. What's up, Raph? How's it going? Nice to see you here. Thanks for being here. Cheers. <laughs> there was another question by Erwin Dotman, uh, switching the topic a little. Um, yeah, go for it. you do you do all kinds of exercises during your show. How did you start with that? Um, uh, without going into too much detail, for my for my 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 day job, I need to stay pretty fit, um, and uh, it's just something that I need. I, I felt I needed to do, uh, and it seemed like something fun. Um, uh, originally when I was, so I, right now I'm at bunker six, um, and I don't have the space to do, um, so we had three get fit, uh, redeems, which were squats, plank and push ups. Um, uh, right now I don't really have the space to do them and get it on camera and make it look nice. Hence the green screen here. Um, uh, but hopefully cross fingers, um, I'm going back, back home. Um, or in about six weeks um, time ish I don't know yet um, work our work are working on it let's say um, but hopefully we'll get the, the get fit cam back out um, and, and do the plank and the push-ups and it's just something I, I like to do to stay fit um, and and the uh, the outlaw crew have seemed to have embraced it some of them do it with me some of them are like no I'm not doing push-ups no not doing it I'll do plank with you. I'll do squats with you. I'll do 10. Yes. Whatever you can do. You, you know, life is about staying fit as possible. Um, um, it, it was interesting. We've got, um, again, without going too deep into it, we've got, um, uh, I, I, I train, I, I don't teach, I, I instruct, I train um, musicians. And, um, but part of that is, is kind of staying fit. And we have four, four teams um, that, uh, that are, I, I look after one team and we've got four other uh, instructors look after the other three teams. Um, and we had a competition this afternoon, like a, a fitness competition. Um, and so all the, all, the, all the teams, they did their, their exercises. Um, and then us as, uh, as the instructors did our own, um, did our own exactly the same, um, yeah, exactly the same uh, exercises. Um, and out of the uh, out of five, so you got the four four teams, and then us. We came second. <laughs> the average age the average age of the teams was about twenty two, twenty three, uh, and.
and our average age of our team or the instructor's team is uh, 43. So, so it, it, there's a benefit to staying fit. <laughs> the youth these days, they're not as fit as they should be. <laughs> but, you know, that's part of, part of the fun, part of the fun of what we do. So, <laughs> yes, hence get fit, get fit. Rule one, cardio. So, have we got any other questions? Oh, yeah, we got some more. Um, cool. Actually, we, we have one question from Waiting for Darkness. May you tell us something beautiful about the place you are at right now, south of UK, so, so gorgeous. Sorry, I'm just say that again, I missed the, the end of it. South of UK is so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so, so where I am, uh, I'm, I'm based on um, an island called Portsea Island, so down down in Portsmouth. Um, and just just south of us, we have the Isle of Wight. It's a little, little diamond, um, but we, we're on. I'm like from where from where I, where where I'm staying. We it's like a seven minute bike ride to the beach. Um, here in the UK, and there's a lot of stony beaches, um, but um, uh, so Portsmouth is 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 all stony beaches, but it's just beautiful and it's south facing, uh, and just kind of to the to the west where the sun sets, it's it's beautiful. They watch the sun go down on a nice day, and you can sit on the beach, and it's just you know it's just a few minutes down the road where, where I am in London. It's it's not quite like that. Um, you know, it's a city. <laughs> I did see it. I did see what was this going back here? Um, product of your mind, wasn't it? The first rule of Zombie Land. Exactly. Product of your mind. Yes. Cardio rule one. Zombie Land. It's a good movie. It's funny. Go watch it. Rule number Great one. Movie. Cardio. Great movie. Great movie. Eight so, um, next question coming in from Sean Weinberg. Um, okay. Can we talk about your moustache? How many years <laughs> until it makes full 360 degrees? <laughs> Have we not made 360 yet? I guess not. Uh -huh. not uh -huh. You guys don't see it very close a lot of the time, um, but uh, it, it's almost getting there. Um, I've trimmed it a few times. I've been growing it for two years. Um, when when the UK went into lockdown at the end of March 2020, um, I started growing a beard. Uh, and when I when I had to when I chose to cut the beard off, I kept the tash. Um, and I've trimmed it a few times ever since, but it's two years of growth, mostly. Um, but uh, I, I honestly don't know how long it's going to last. But if you're, I will, I will make an event of it. Um, it is a, it is a three million. Um, it is currently a three million um, channel point redeem right now. Um, <laughs> Virtual God might put out um, uh, that you're looking like a head puppet, and I'm trying to match this on the cam. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just, um, just stupid shit talk. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Do didn't, it. Didn't want to inter uh, interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got a we've got a three three million point um, channel redeem, which which will never be done. No one's got three million points. Yeah. Um, but uh, one day I will change that, uh, and it will become a, a, a community redeem to, to shave off off the tash. Um, whether the community want me to shave off the tash or not, I don't know. That will come at a later uh, a later point. But I always said I'd keep it um, for um, at least a couple of years while I'm in I, while I'm in this job down here. So um, it could be quite soon that it might make it might disappear. But almost like with with Twitch and having a moustache the whole time on Twitch, it'd be weird now to not have it. Yeah. And everyone, say, everyone, everyone now knows me having a having a tash. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine what would happen if I shave off my beard. Nobody would recognize <laughs> me anymore. Well, exactly, exactly. Hmm. I mean, it, it kind of almost luckily I'm I'm. I'm quite blonde. I'm quite fair, um, so you don't see. It's not like it's a kind of black moustache that's so obvious, you know. Poirot. Um You you could make a, a channel ch a community challenge for I don't know ten million points or th th something to dye your beard. To what? To dye it. To give it another color. 
I the moustache. Yeah. Yeah, in in pink or blue or something. Maybe, maybe temporarily, like maybe. So I have like some ho like kind of school holiday times. Um, I have about three weeks off in the summer. Um, and maybe I could put some some blue into it or something like that. You know, just for, just yeah. for the holiday. <laughs> there are like um, like spray colors that go off after one wash. Yeah, yeah. That was spray. that would be fun. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ah, I can see that. I I can see that. Matt <laughs> with a pink beard and and sparkly background. I can see that. Maybe may, maybe playing Spice Girls or something. No mercy. Nein, danke. <laughs> <laughs> and I really really have to watch out what I'm saying now, because <laughs> if I do. Do now say something silly like, if you do it, I would do it also, and we can do a color beer stre beard stream together, then I will be fucked up. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Virtual Goth Knight ended up like this, wearing heels and a corset during the 48 hours. I know that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, green beard, it's Paddy's day on the 17th. That's, a, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Are you streaming on the 17th? Let no. me check. Let me check. No, Let me check. It's a Thursday. No, no, no. Unless you carry on till midnight. Ah, we can. We could do that. Hmm. I'll check if I can get some of the the green spray color. Oh my God, Megan. <laughs> um. Ah, you've been also um, um, marked on 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 Facebook. Uh, man, how to get a full glitter beard? This is a uh, something we both have been linked on Facebook right now. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! Like um, I don't know, this is like seven years ago, eight years ago. Um, I, I was out at uh, out at Slimelight, um, London's uh, or the world's longest running goth club in the world. Um, it's running 37 years or something now. Anyway, it's limelight. Um, and there'd been a, um, a, a party the night before on the Friday night. So it's limelight. Historically, limelight was every week, um, every Saturday. It's since, since COVID now it's, I think it's one once a month and they make kind of more special event kind of stuff, but uh, it used to be weekly. Um, so uh, out on the Saturday night, uh, and there'd been a party on the, on the Friday night, and it, a party, I think it was, I think the club was called Rumpus, um, but it was a huge like um, flamboyantly, um, it's a glitter party basically, uh, and and the whole of the club, the club is like very you know closed, it's very black walls, black ceilings, black floors, but everywhere on the floor was glitter. You know, I'm wearing my my. Um, my uh my 10 hole 12 hole grinders black leather matte black leather because you know black matte leather is awesome um unless you're vegan and i totally get that i have some vegan boots as well um uh anyway these these boots that were black uh i i, I took them off in the morning on on sunday morning because the club used to run till seven so i'd stay out till seven catch the train home be home by like eight o'clock nine o'clock in the morning um go to sleep woke up sunday afternoon or whatever and uh and looked that looked down at my uh looked down at my boots and they were just glistening they were so beautiful oh uh, my god the amount of <laughs> polish i put on them to get rid of the glitter you've got no idea <laughs> Well, actually, I do have an idea because uh, I have two glitter stories as well I can share. Oh, the awesome. first one is when I was still uh, studying informatics, I was working part-time as a DJ in a local strip club. Right. And it was an interesting job, to put it like this. I've met some f some famous artists during that time. I mean, what the girls are doing on that polls is no fun, and I couldn't do any of that. Mm. But um, there were some up. nights where everything was full of glitter, and I hated it. 
And uh, the other thing is in the, the Club der Kult around here where I'm DJing a lot, um, we have um, some bloody dance nights, they are called, and uh, this is where we have fake blood uh, showers above the dance floor, like in Blade. And <laughs> somebody thought it would be funny, after somebody got all covered in fake blood, to throw glitter at them. And <laughs> these persons hugged me afterwards. I swear. I swear with all my heart, I found glitter three weeks later on my body. <laughs> yeah. In places you never thought you could get glitter. Exactly. <laughs> and in places I never wanted to have glitter. Yeah, yeah. It's like sand, isn't it? When you're at the beach, yeah. you, know, you, just get, you just get this, this fine, gritty sand yes. everywhere. And you're just like, where, where? Like, why is it there? You know, I never put it there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. What's the other story? Was that was that two stories? That were that have been both the DJing at uh, the strip club and the second uh, one yeah, yeah. in the cult. Ah, uh, awesome. Hmm? It was just Lost Boys glitter blood. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we've been talking about your new album. We've been talking about the Forty Eight Hours. We've been talking about uh, remixes upcoming and so on, and some live gigs upcoming from you. Um, when are you going to visit us here in Germany to DJ together? When am I getting the invite? Ah, <laughs> I get it. Well, um, I, 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 it, uh, it looks like due to circumstances, um, it's unlikely that Slither and I, oh, certainly I, will be able to make Wave Gothic Treffen if it goes ahead, um, which I'm I'm really bummed out about. Um, uh, it's just a busy weekend. Um, if you know anything about the world and the UK, there's lots of things going on on that weekend, um, and there's um, there's no way I'm going to make it. Um, so that was that was going to be the first opportunity, and and trust me, like I I I. I'm really, really excited about coming to Germany, um, to going going somewhere, a festival, or a club, or a city, or something, and just you know, oddly, and I, I, I certainly not in a in an ego way, but it will be really weird for me um, walking into a place and someone comes up to me and goes, "Matt, you're Matt Hart," because I, I, I kind of assume that might happen the assumption being the mother of all fuck ups um but uh that kind of that kind of thought of someone because they know me or people know me because they've seen my face they i'm bald and i've got a mustache and i wear black and i wear my own merch um that that um people may recognize me before i recognize them you know i, I know that so, um, and, and you know this this goth goth Twitch community is, is so amazing. I, we have certainly made some some very close friends now on on, um, uh, on Facebook and, and and Instagram etc. Um, yourself included. Uh, and, and but your face I know, you, my face you know. Yeah. Yet the, the, I can see you know the 128 people that are in the chat right now. Yes. Maybe I I, I know the faces of five to ten people. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, they may well, well certainly, if, if there's 128 people us. watching me now, they'll know me. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I walk, I walk into a bar or into a venue. Um, there's, there's this kind of the eye, the eyes might turn, and oh, no, that's that's it's 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 that's that's me and the the, the ego thing kind of thinking. But I, I don't know you, but you may well know me, and and that's going to be really that's going to be the weirdest thing. To kind of to 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 be going to places where I've been been invited, to, and certainly through the Twitch community, you know, you know, let's um um I I don't know, it's it. I would have loved to have gone to Treffen this year because I think this this two year point from when we started um, is kind of like okay, it's been long enough. It's about time we meet in real in real life, right? Um, uh, and and I'm I'm kind of pretty pretty bummed out that I can't make it, but um, there will be other times. And, and yeah, let's definitely, let's definitely. Uh, you know let's make it work. I've got you know 
I, I've got three weeks off over the summer, so. Um, I mean, I mean, talk talking plainly, coming when, from the when, from the when, when, from from London to to Nuremberg or to Stuttgart is about a 50 or 60 euro trip uh, round robin. So we, we, as soon as I can offer you a club gig, I uh, this is definitely something to to get you or to get a virtual goth night over to us. Yeah, but, for sure. um, just flying you over to DJ together here in the studio is fun for us, but I I doubt it's worth it. Mm. I mean, feel mm. invited if you if you find time for that, I, I'd be happy anyways. Oh, thanks. That, that would be fun, actually. That, it certainly would be quite fun. Um, yeah, you would finally get to know Kain and Lilith in person. Ah, uh, indeed. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, to, to, to go to a festival, I mean, because how, how many how more how many more festivals do you have over the summer in in Germany that you that you personally would possibly go to or or um, that are? I mean, the big ones are definitely the the Wave Gute Treffen. The Amphi Festival, the Mega yeah. Luna. Mm. Then for the more metalheads, it's the the Summer Breeze, for example, which I yeah. do not go to, or Wacken, which I also skip normally. And then there is um, the 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 what's it called? Uh, Darkstorm Festival, some some later in the year, I guess. Mm. And uh, I'm not too sure, but uh, the the big three are uh, BGT, um, Mira Luna, and Amphi. Then, as Schwarzheit just put out the uh, the Nocturnal Culture Night, which is happening from time to time. Right. But it's okay. By far not not uh, that big uh, in comparison to to the Amphi and the the WGT. Ah, Darkstorm yeah. is always at uh, at uh, cr around Christmas. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the Autumn Moon Festival as well. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, Darktunes, do you have any any other festivals I I did miss, or anybody in the chat? If you have some festivals that I missed right now, just put them in the chat, please. Rock Hearts, Etro oh, Etropolis, e yeah. yeah, yeah. Stella Nomine was nice they do, last do they year, do right? Two of those a year, or is it just one? I'm not sure. But I think it just passed, didn't it? Was it was it January or like November or mm -hmm. something? Kind of more of a winter indoor festival. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I've seen that uh, the upcoming cooperation of Ducktunes and yourself. Uh, this is something yeah. I will definitely check out at that moment. And uh, uh, for seeing Ducktunes here, you have to send me a date when you uh, when you want to come to the studio so we can do the how to DJ stream. <laughs> just, just thinking of it while while reading this. Haha, <laughs> missed it. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> um, goody. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about before we start talking about wrapping this up? I don't know. Have we covered everything? <laughs> I think so. I hope so. I don't I, know. I, 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 couple, a couple of, couple of other. I guess. Um, thank you so much to your community. Um. For for voting for the um, the two core to be number one on uh, insert scary name here channel um, best of 2021. Um, thanks Outlaw Crew because I know mm -hmm. that's part, part of you too. You know like and you know we, we love to push the social media and um, uh, Slither Slither and I uh, as as a team that we are. Uh, it's all her. It, It's all her promotion. Um, uh, we, you know, we put the link out in in our channel, and we were pushing it and pushing it, and and much uh, much appreciation to, to to everyone that voted for that and and pushed to the core to number one track of 2021. Um, there were certainly some um, some awesome tracks um, in 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 the top 100. So. Um, just happened to be the vote who knows but there's some, there was certainly some awesome tracks up in there um uh what else the um thanks thanks again to maybe other people in here but certainly my community as well for the the sonic seducer um if you are in germany right now um um go and buy sonic seducer this month and next month um uh i have an interview in there with sonic seducer um, most of what you probably know now by any chance because I've talked all about everything. Um, but yeah, we won the Battle of Bands. We 
um, that'll be me. Um, won the Battle of the Bands and Tonic Seducer magazine, um, and uh, we won. There was there was lots of kind of prizes, some physical prizes or some promotional prizes, and we took the um, took the opportunity to get some extra promotion via Heartbeat, um, which um, kind of push out promotion into the DAC things like this. So hopefully we've got um, some cut, uh, some stuff coming up in um, up in the DAC uh, and through there. Their community um, and and the stuff by side as well for Face of Beat Seven as well, which um, which my my new track I'm Overlord is on. So if you buy that album, you uh, which I think is out now, um, uh, and you can you can get I'm Overlord from that. Um, uh, with Resistance Festival coming up soon as well in a, in just just over a month, I guess. Um, uh, they are putting together an album. Um, a festival album, which uh, if you follow me on social media, Facebook DJ Matt Hart UK, um, uh, Instagram Matt Hart thirty eight oh eight, and Twitter Matt G Hart, or follow me on Twitch uh, Matt Hart thirty eight oh eight. And uh, where was I going with that? Um, oh yeah, yeah, the the resistance. So they're putting together a CD for all of the artists um, if they wanted to. Um, um, gift a song to the um, uh, if they wanted to gift a song to the uh, the CD, the album, the festival CD, um, you'll get an exclusive Tans mix of um, my very very first um, released track. Uh, it's called Judgment Requiem. Um, you make you. I know Patrick. You played um, Requiem. Xavier Swafford. Xavier. I love uh, that remix. Ah, uh, it's great. But, um, Xavier is the basically the producer for um, the keyboard player for Three Teeth. Oh. Um, yeah, so um, I, I was kind of friends with them from the very beginning. They came, uh, I went out to Chicago for Cold Waves Festival, um, and uh, I met them out there. And then they came over to the UK, um, and we followed them. We followed them literally. Um, Slither and I followed them through the UK, through Europe. Um, we've seen them in Leipzig. Uh, we saw them at Wave Gothic Treffen a couple of years ago. Um, anyway, we've we've seen them like twenty times. Um, big fan of them, um, but good friends with them. Um, and I got chatting with Xavier and was like, "Dude, do you want to just do a remix for me?" Uh, and that the remix of, of Requiem is um, is banging. It's it's, it's yes. a hundred and ten BPM club track that just goes exactly. down and hits hard. Um, so um, I've got I've got a new mix of that coming out. Um, which takes actually takes influence from the remix um, from the original track, which was quite slow. It was about 90 BPM. So I, I've actually re- I personally have remixed it in a way that takes influence from that remix, but speeds it up and makes it a kind of a live. Um, will eventually be a live version um, that's a little oh, bit okay. faster. Um, so if you do ever get to see me live, um, that's one of our live tracks that we'll do in that in that new version, and that version will become available on. Uh, on the Resistance um, Resistance Festival um, CD, um, and it will be then on Below the Terror Part Two, um, which will come out. Um, I'm, I'm looking at a year, to be honest. Um, I've got the bare bones of of enough tracks that um, uh, I'm think I'm thinking like literally follow the same pattern from this year next year. Um, do a bunch of remixes, um, and then the singles kind of towards autumn. Uh, winter time and then a release in in kind of springtime um but yes i have a new brand new album coming out below the terror part two um uh, below the terror part one <laughs> i was confused there for a second <laughs> yeah yeah below the terror part one uh that comes out on the 15th of march which is next tuesday come along to outlaw vision uh matt hart 3808 on twitch um and uh uh the um we will do our outlaw vision show from 9 p.m uk time to 11 and then from 11 till midnight we'll do a talk through the album uh basically like a, a pre-release or an, a release album album release party um uh on uh on on after the show so that's kind of where we're at really um i feel like i've basically talked for an hour and 20 minutes um, ah, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. 
<laughs> it's good. It's uh, to be to be honest. It's it's uh, a big pleasure having somebody um, with me in 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 the talk uh, who has something to say. N not not saying somebody uh, some people did differently, but um, it's it's uh, it's nice having somebody who has a lot to talk about. And choo choo, everybody, we got a hype train going on. Thank you so much for pushing this. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mimokwai. Thank you, Bewitched. Thank you, Xobotalk. Thank you, Dachkatze. Okay, now you just uh, earned yourself five extra minutes of uh, talk time if you want to. As long as the hype train <laughs> is going, I'm going nowhere. <laughs> Ravenfeather, thank you so much. Silent and Invisible, thank you for nine months. I guess I'm going nowhere either. This is what it is. <laughs> Happy for that. Okay, um, so Matt Hart, um, yeah. what was, what was um, your biggest um thing you discovered uh, regarding your your own djing during the two years of twitch now <sighs> well i mean really the thing that i, I mentioned earlier at track id uh, and a doing it and b forgetting it <laughs> um just uh, Really, I think I think it kind of um, it reinvigorated my love for for DJing and my love for music. I think I got I got so ingrained in in um, writing music. Yes, I was still listening to music, but I, and and but I wasn't necessarily kind of having to feel like I need to research music and and kind of you know play new music to the masses like I was doing in a club. Um, and, and coming down to Twitch, and uh, you know when we started DJing, I was like. What am I going to play next week? Because I haven't found any new music yet. Looking at my catalog, I've got you know twenty thousand songs that I can play at my fingertips. Like, but what do I really want to play? I really want to play the music that I enjoy. So, I think being able to um, um, to to kind of find new music and, and this um, uptick, you know, this this take up on um, on on this on this industrial bass genre is is certainly something that's really kind of um it's taking off um and it's well worth paying attention to especially when there's there's bands that you wouldn't expect to do it maybe bands that you know from the more alternative industrial genre moving into that style um where there are bands that are like edm artists that are already writing in that style like a dark electronic sound But they were they you know they they already have a huge following but where you see a band that is moving from um from the from the industrial genre into that industrial bass genre i think it, that's that's something special that's 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 kind of emerging from from the music scene um uh creepy culture lovely to see you guys here thanks for being here you guys rock <laughs> um But yeah, I, I, I think that 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 new I, you know that I love playing that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I really do try and find that those bands that that are already our scene that um, that are making that music as opposed to a more kind of mainstream scene that are making dark electronic music. Although it's hard, it's hard to get away from it because some of it's awesome, even though it's not necessarily our scene. It's 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 a tough one. I, I I've always tried to. I think with with it being a DJ, I've always tried to, because I'm an artist myself. Like I, I want to support, uh, want to support other artists, but I want to support our scene. So why would I pl why would I play um, why would I play a, a band that has already two hundred thousand followers on Facebook as opposed to the band that's got two thousand? But it's still making is is making awesome music. I, I would rather play the, the the rather look after the little guy than than play the big, you know, the, those big artists. It, it, it comes down to what what I like in the sound that I that I that I would I would DJ. But um, I think um, what I got most out of this in the last two years, I think the emergence of industrial bass music um, and its crossover into our into our industrial scene. Um, but the The industrial artists that are embracing it. I mean, you listen to the new Hosiko album, um, and what's what's the track? Broken, something uh, broken, broken, something. Right? Empires or something. Bro wait, wait a second. Yeah, broken. yeah, broken empires. 
Yeah, and and you listen to it. It's it's 174 BPM. That's like dark drum and bass, which you know, yeah. in the industrial bass genre, it kind of, I, I would say it almost crosses over into you've got the mid tempo and you've got dark industrial bass. Um, if um, if any of you guys don't know, uh, and you should do, um, follow follow and find Hybrid Black uh, Records. Um, they are pioneering. They're pushing the industrial bass sound um they're uh, an independent record label from from london uk um and they're pushing that kind of dark that dark uh, electronic industrial music and they're pushing the smaller artists as well um you know you've heard of biomechanical mechanical vein um salty uh even morris black has done some remis, rem, um, remixes and, and releases through them um but well well worth a, a um a record label to check out um and uh, uh forgot my train of thought on that one but uh industrial bass you know that's that's what's really come out of i think it's come out of these two days but wh- where i like to support small artists they're a small record label um uh, and you know it, it's it, looking off look like i said looking after the small guy you know our, our scene has so many so many good bands that probably are missed by most by most um by most DJs, especially especially that you know that can't can't afford to get onto a chart or can't afford to kind of push into playlists and and that kind of thing, and it's just you know it's finding those and, and if you, if you love it, play it. You know, it's, um, yeah, of course, it, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the biggest point I I've taken out of those two years that. Um, Coming, coming, coming back to the club will be really hard to to get back to playing all-time favorites and thinking about what have been those favorites because my style changed that uh, that much during the last two years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, question coming uh, from Null Twenty Three. Question to Matt: Do you play cowbell during your streams? <laughs> no, I just play the fool during my streams. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't have a cowbell. I have a microphone that doesn't work sometimes, and I, 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 I talk a lot. That's that's my streams, but I play a lot of good music too, and and support the support the artists that need the support really, especially during COVID. And without without bands being able to play live, especially if the bands don't have someone who's been a DJ or have kind of embraced the idea of Twitch and being able to put that, you know, put out, go and buy this track. You know, have you guys seen Black Book before? Probably nope. not, but you have nope. seen it. Have you, have you seen it in a in a twitch stream yes have you heard it in a twitch stream yes you know that's kind of why we're here Completely. um i have <laughs> i see i see slither mentions the uh was it oh no no silent and invisible viola for the win um we're still at level four so we've still got at least a minute to go unless exactly. we unless we hit level five we've got another five minutes and that means yeah, you get Sli- another already minutes. already pl- plotted out to stretch it <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, me more quiet, me um, more quiet. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Viola. Yeah. So, like, my one year anniversary of being on Twitch, I am. Um, so I'm, I'm a viola player. Um, I, violas are like a big violin. I play like this, um, and uh, that's what I, I, I've been doing. I mean, you guys want to know the history of it? Um, I, I started playing the violin when I was six years old. Um, so I kind of had music in my blood for forever, um, and when I was 14, I found I found the viola, um, and it's it's a deeper, mellower, cooler instrument. Um, anyway, I played it, and and that's kind of what I do professionally. Um, and I, on my one year Twitch stream, I put it as a as a community redeem that if they wanted to hear it on the one year stream, that I would play it. Um, and and we had I think I mean, it was like half an hour. I don't know if it was an hour or so. Um, but uh, we we I, I played the viola on the stream and I plugged in a microphone and we and we um, we uh, we made level five awesome yes uh, um, we uh, yeah so I, I played viola on the stream um, and and everyone loved it because it's such a departure from what I do um, what I write musically what I DJ you know I'm a classically trained viola player but I. I DJ industrial dark, dark music. Like, how the hell did you get into that? Well, like I said earlier in the stream, um, I got into Fear Factory when I was about 15, 16, and uh, it blew my mind. And, and my, my parents were like, what's this road music you listen to? Having listened to Bark and Handel and 
Mozart and Beethoven for, you know, uh, growing up as a kid and it just blew my mind. And, and, and I think as, as much as my parents still want me to be a classically trained viola player and don't really understand my dark leanings, um, I think, I think it was almost their influence that I got into darker music because they, they'd never, they'd never show me a world outside classical music. So, um, so I kind of got in, I, I got into Fear Factory and then, you know, likes of, um, well, I certainly I'd spent a lot of time listening to heavy metal. Um, and then I, I got into, um, I was I was out at a Fear Factory show. Went to a bar afterwards, and I met someone, uh, and they said you should come and see Skinny Puppy. Um, and this was like 2003. I'm a late bloomer. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so, so I think it was the the Greater Wrong and the Right album had just come out, um, and I listened to that, and I was like, "What is this music? It's like fucking awesome." And and the same with um, same with Ministry. <laughs> And again, the first album, you know, I'm, I'm opening, I'm bearing my soul to you. So you better, better be nice to me. Uh, <laughs> the first that ministry album I listened to was, um, uh, is it No W? Um, uh, I think it's No W, Patrick. I think so, yeah. Um, and, and you know, it was it was a heavy thrash metal kind of album. Still had the electronic influence in it. Um, uh, uh, and um, <laughs> um, uh, and you know that that kind of that electronic that 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 more electronic side of music that, that was what kind of begun to kind of grow my interest um, in 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 kind of more of the EBM industrial scene. Uh, and then I met Slither in a club, uh, and I guess as she says, I was wearing a skinny puppy T-shirt, um, and she so wasn't in, interested in the metalhead that I was, but. Um, Oh well, history is what it is, uh, and uh, you know we ended up hanging out in Slime Light, and 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 I got into the kind of that was kind of early two thousands when the likes of you know, um, Combi, uh, yeah, Combi Christ and and Covenant, and they were the kind of bands that were right on that kind of pinnacle of the scene. BNB Nation, um, I don't know, I didn't even know the band names Suicide back then. Commando, but, das yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and that's the stuff that was being played in the club and that kind of lightweight stuff and then the kind of the heavier stuff and, and you know that's what changed me from being a metalhead into a, an, into a kind of call it rivet head I suppose you know just a big a big fan of the clang <laughs> yeah and anyways even sh if if she hasn't been interested in the metalhead you, w you were back then she, you still seem to have some made some impression on her right I, th I think so. I think I, I think I, yeah, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> so happy for you. So, so happy for you, really. Uh, it's good to see the chat and everyone, everyone knows the old music, the old gods is awesome. Uh, yeah, Easy Bell Stars just it's putting, it's putting out. The new music. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Carol. It's it's a, it's a part of it. It's fine. Uh, Easy Bell Star just put out, I met my husband at a skinny puppy show. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we, nice. We get, we, get in, we, we get into it and we, we listen to it and we love it and we embrace it because of the music that it is, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, woohoo, we finished the hype train. Thank you so much, everybody, for this crazy hype train. So now let's uh, let me blink a little Matt's Bandhout logo again. <laughs> Everybody, this has been or will be or is the great Matt Hart coming to us from London, UK. He is uh, the one and only man behind the band Matt Hart, and uh, he's a friendly co DJ. Yeah, Shadow Bad Points, yeah, a f fellow DJ of the Swarm and a good friend by now. And I am so happy that he found time to talk to me and with all of you tonight um i will now do the turnover i will uh, rearrange the camera and i will be back there in a few minutes you know that uh, drill by now i will leave you with some music coming out of the playlist and with some videos of kind and this man gets the last words of the interview
Um, interestingly, um, I have literally, literally just crossed crossed the threshold of a hundred thousand insert scary name redeem points. Woohoo! <laughs> as 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 we as we were folding out at the end of this chat. So nice. very cool. Nice. I'm happy to hear and, that. And, <laughs> and to a uh, to answer the point of am I calling you old? No, I'm saying that we love the old gods because the old gods are awesome. Um, but there are certainly new gods now that we um we can we can worship at the altar of. Um, and um, you know, there's a lot of great music out there, guys. Go and support it, go and find it. Um, if you if you have heard any of my music and you haven't followed me on Bandcamp, you don't even need to buy anything. Just go and click the little heart on Bandcamp, um, matthart.bandcamp.com. You can see it, it's just down there on on the um, on the uh, on the screen. Is it that side or is it that side? No, I think it's that side. You're perfectly right. Yeah, yeah, there it is, matthart.bandcamp.com. Um, but uh, thank you so much, uh, Patrick, for having me on the show. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been pretty candid, to be fair. I think I've probably opened up more than I have done anywhere else. Uh, that, you, that I've yet um, yet done. Um, I certainly have a couple of other interviews coming up in the future, in the next few weeks. Um, um, but uh, below the terror comes out next Tuesday. Come along to Outlaw Vision on Monday night at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. if you're in Europe, uh, and come along for the release party of Below the Terror Part One. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun as ever. I'm going to be drinking the uh, Zijin and Zitonic. Um, uh... And I think his internet connection just died. Yep. 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 And thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and to everyone out there. Aha. Stay He's, safe. Yes. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. Have a, have a great time. I'll be right back in a few minutes. Uh, see you in a few minutes. And thank you, Matt Hart, for your time. See you. This is the last break!